Hey everyone, I'm Sue and welcome back for another episode of Does This Notion Really Work? And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about the Classic Curves Ruler. This ruler was designed by Sharon McConnell of Color Girl Quilts. Sharon is a quilt pattern designer and she's had patterns featured in many well-known quilting magazines. For example, American Patchwork and Quilting, Love Patchwork in the UK, and Modern Patchwork, among others. Sharon loves curved piecing in quilts. And many of her patterns feature this curved shape. So a lot of her customers and students were asking, is there a template or a ruler or something to help make this a little bit easier? And I always say that the best ideas come from teaching and come from our students. And this is exactly where the concept came from. So she invented the Classic Curves Ruler. Not only is it a template for lots of different sizes of curves, but it's actually a ruler. From this concept, Sharon went into Adobe Illustrator, which is a software that I even use myself for when I'm creating patterns, and a lot of graphic artists use it as well. She got in there, she created a couple of different shapes, she made a template, she actually put it onto a cereal box, used that template to experiment for a few quilts, and guess what? It worked. She was so excited when she finally got the actual template in and definitely admitted that it was way better than her cardboard cereal thing. But you know what? That's how us designers have to create things. So it's always exciting when we get the idea, we test it out, we get the real product, and then we introduce it to the public. And today I'm going to share with you how the Classic Curves Ruler works and a few other things that it's capable of. So let's go ahead and take a look now. And in order to open up your Classic Curves ruler, just use a straight pin and remove all the plastic, but hold on to that pretty piece of paper that is your instructions. The Classic Curves ruler is an 11 inch acrylic square. On two sides of the ruler you will notice measurements with eighth of an inch increments. There are 10 cutting grooves, which means you can cut all your favorite curved pieces, shapes in 10 different sizes. The smallest makes a three and a half inch finish block, like the Drunkard's Path, and the largest is an eight inch finished block. You'll notice that the measurements have four inches all the way up to eight and a half inches because your quarter inch seam allowance on both sides is included, which is a huge time saver. There's two little squares in the bottom which both have lines aligning with it. One is the convex curve and the other is the concave curve. For demonstration purposes, I'm using two different materials and you're absolutely gonna need your instructions. The first one we're gonna do is the convex and the next is the concave. First thing we're gonna do is start with a convex curve. In order to do this, we wanna begin with a fabric square that is the same size as the desired curve. So in this case, we are gonna cut a six and a half inch square. Next, go ahead and align one corner of the fabric with the right angle on the ruler next to the convex curve symbol. You'll notice that because we have the same size square as the curve we wanna create, the curve lines up with the two raw edges. And you're gonna to wanna to just adjust your ruler so that it's comfortable for you to cut because the next thing you're going to cut is that six and a half inch curve. Now keep in mind it's whatever size curve and square you want. So if you wanted a three and a half inch square you would have gone with the four. If you would have wanted an eight inch square you would have gone with the eight and a half. And there is your convex curve. Pretty easy huh? We're going to follow the second part of the instructions to create the concave curve. In order to create the concave curve, you're going to want to begin with a fabric square that's at least a half inch larger than the planned curve. So in this case, we are going to cut a seven inch square. And now you're going to align the corner of the fabric with the right angle on the ruler next to the concave curve symbol. You're going to cut the fabric at the same measurements as the concave curve. So in this case, we're going to cut the six and a half inch curve. And now you're going to want to rotate your material so that it's the most comfortable for you to cut. In my case, the way that looks good on the screen isn't always the most comfortable for me to cut because I am right handed. So I've rotated it and now we're going to go ahead and cut the six and a half inch curve. And 
And now once you remove, you will notice that you have the concave curve, which will fit perfectly into your convex curve. Let's go ahead and talk about sewing. Again, I highly recommend looking at your instructions for how to pin, but basically you're gonna take the concave curve and you're gonna put it on top of the convex curve. You're gonna sew with the concave curve on the top and just kind of even out the pinning. And you're gonna sew straight across at a scant quarter of an inch. In order to get the perfect scant quarter of an inch seam allowance, I use the Perfect Piecing Seam Guide. And you can learn all about that. I have the link in the description. But basically, we're going to insert the needle through the center hole and align it so that we can get that perfect scant quarter of an inch. Right there. We just put a post-it note down to hold that in place. And now we're gonna go ahead and sew the entire seam using that scant quarter of an inch. Of course, don't forget to remove your pins. You never wanna stitch over a straight pin. It'll actually force your machine to skip stitches. Now, when you're working on curves, sometimes it can be tricky. So use a stiletto, and in this case, I really like using the By Annie Stiletto and Pressing Tool. I have more information about that as well in the description. I personally just find that using that stiletto, it just kinda helps remove any extra stress. You know, trying to get my finger right close up next to the presser foot, near the needle. This little guy just gets right in there, and of course you can see that it helps hold the material down while we're stitching. And you can see how you can use that stiletto and get right up to the very tip. And look at that, my seam came out perfect. Okay, now this might terrify some of us. I have to say that using no pins can be a little scary, but there are instructions how to stitch this drunkard's path without pins. Right sides together with the convex curve on top. And all you need is one little clip and or pin. I'm using the wonder clips. When you get to your machine, you're going to keep that same little piece of post-it note there from using the perfect piecing seam guide and you're going to just align it. And I have to say that at first I was a little anxious, a little nervous, but I went right back to my stiletto and used it to help me lay the materials down nice and flat. Okay, and considering I have not ever done this particular block without pins, I have to say I was a little bit more anxious. Um, I went ahead and put a clip at the bottom of the seam too and really took advantage of using the stiletto and just, just taking my time. I did not go as fast, I have to say, but considering that I have not done this, I think it came out pretty good and I was really pleased with the results. I mean, look at the end right there. I'm pretty close. So if you are an experienced quilter, this is gonna, you know, it's gonna be so nice for you to have all your seams lined straight up. And let's see how I did. Okay, this side, the end came out really good. And the beginning, honestly, not bad. I mean, I'm, a, I'm about an eighth of an inch off right here, but not bad for my first attempt. I really like how, even in the instruction, Sharon shows us how to do the pressing. You're gonna wanna press the convex seam toward the concave and give it a press. And then we're gonna wanna square up our block. And in this case, I'm gonna use the side that has the measurements to get it nice and squared and trim off the extra. And now I have a nice square block, yay. And I love when all my notions work together. These are the G-Easy stickers and you can click the description link below to where it talks about how to use them. But basically they're stickers that are looking like arrows. And you're gonna just put those arrows at the end of the curve that you wanna cut. So in this case, we're cutting a six and a half inch. Now this really comes in handy when you're working with a print like the one I was just using. It just makes it a little easier. You're not getting confused. So put the stickers where you want, and now you won't have any confusion. Now Sharon also shows how to cut two concave curves. So we're gonna look at the instructions and we're gonna do that right now. In order to create this two concave curves in one cut, we're gonna begin with a fabric square that's an inch and a half larger than the planned curve. We're gonna cut one inch from two opposite corners. So go ahead and use the markings that are on your ruler to do that. And in this case, we're wanting to finish with a six and a half inch curve. So we're starting with an eight inch curve. So we're just gonna cut that out with our rotary cutter and mat and ruler. And you can just discard those two one inch squares. Now this is where it gets really interesting. You're going to align the cut corners with the concave cutting line 
of the ruler adjacent to desire curved path size. So in this case, we're going to align it with a six and a half inch curve. And I'm really happy we have those GEZ stickers because that helps us see where we want to align that cut corner edge. So we're just going to adjust it so that the cut corner is with the top squared out corner. And that is the line we're gonna be cutting, the six and a half inch. And we're gonna cut right inside that six and a half inch line. And I gotta say, this is just so awesome when it all lines up. It did it perfectly as described. Now you're gonna take that concave curve and put it to the side and the convex, we're going to now cut a second one, but we're actually creating a second concave curve. Now, in order to do this, remember you want your square a little bit larger, about an inch or so larger. So we're gonna line up the seven and a half inch lines with the two straight edges. And there we go, we're cutting at the six and a half inch curve. And what you are left with is a scrap, which you can use in other quilt blocks, and you are left with two identical matching concave curves. And what's really cool is on the back of the instructions, Sharon actually includes a pattern. So now that you take all the things you've just learned and make a quilt. So what did you think of that? I hope you enjoyed seeing that as much as I enjoyed showing it. I mean, think about it. You've got accuracy, which means less struggle, which means you're gonna have more fun. And then you've got speed, which means you're gonna make more quilts and things that have curves. So aside from quilters, who else could use this? Well, I mean, anybody that makes anything that needs a circle or a curve. So it could even be for paper crafting. So like scrapbooking would be a really great thing to use the classic curves ruler for as well. Of course, applique and making circles in lots of different sizes. So now you're probably wondering, where can I get my very own Classic Curves Ruler, Sue? Well, you can go to Sharon's website. You can buy it right directly from the designer, or you can walk into your local quilt shop or sewing shop and ask them to order it for you if they don't already have it in stock. And they are sold worldwide. So no matter where you're at, you can get one. And you're also probably wondering, how much does this notion really cost? Well, it retails for $28.50. And I think it's worth mentioning, not only can you get the ruler and the curves and do all kinds of your own creative things, but Sharon has a ton of tutorials and patterns that coincide with the classic curves ruler. This way you're ready to get started and you can start making beautiful things today. And if you have just three seconds, go down below, leave a comment and give me a thumbs up. Tell me what you enjoyed about this ruler and what are some of your favorite rulers. I'd love to see what you are cutting with today. And do you like social media? Well, I am a social butterfly, so join me over at Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook. And did you know I have a Facebook fan club? So go ahead and follow me there, ask to join, and start having some fun sharing your projects that you're working on from Sueberry Designs. And until I see you next time, I hope you have a creative day. Bye-bye. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe below. And don't forget, you can also follow me on Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook. Have a creative day. Bye-bye.